lab number seven, conservation of energy. You may be confused as to why you're looking at the same setup as was used in the last lab. And it is the same setup, same red cart on an inclined plane. Uh, the angle is even the same. I haven't touched it since I did that lab. It turns out that for a simple system, studying the position, velocity, and acceleration is easy enough to do. And we were able to get some results. But if your system becomes more complex, then dealing with vector quantities like that also becomes more complex and quickly gets out of hand. If this was a roller coaster, we'd be in serious trouble. It helps to have another way to look at the motion of the cart that does not uh, involve vectors. And one such way is energy. The energy of the cart as it goes up the track and comes back down is changing. There are two kinds of energy here. There's kinetic energy, the energy of its motion. Because the velocity is changing continuously, the kinetic energy is changing continuously. Its potential energy is about its position, how high it is. The difference in its position from where it is now, which we're going to call zero, to the position when it's at the top of the track. And if we add those together, they should be the same at each point on the track. Because the most important thing about energy is, energy is conserved. The exact statement here should be, in this system, energy is conserved if the system is closed. Closed means there's no energy leaking out, there's no energy leaking in. But we already know that that is not true. When we looked at the acceleration, we saw that the um, acceleration changed up the track from when it came down the track. And hopefully you deduce the fact that that change is because of the uh, resistive forces. Resistive forces leak energy out of the system. Now we treated those resistive forces as constant and we did a little averaging trick and we were able to eliminate them. But that's not going to work with energy. The energy of this system uh, is going to reduce through resistive forces cum cumulatively. It doesn't change sign when it comes up and down the track. It's always going to be adding up. And that's something we're going to have to deal with. We'll talk about it when we're looking at the capstone file. So our goal here is we're going to uh, launch that cart up the track and we're going to measure at several points up and down both its velocity and its height above the zero point where it's sitting now. And you're going to calculate its mechanical energy. How we deal with the fact that that mechanical energy is actually falling continuously is another question. So there is one thing I have to show you. I told you before that the cart has a, um, a spring inside. That spring is going to be here when I launch it. I'll press this button, it'll pop out there. In the third procedure, we're going to be using Hooke's law to figure out the energy of this spring. And it turns out, as will be explained in the Google Doc, that the energy of the spring depends on the difference between that and that, that distance. And I'll explain that in the Google Doc. So let's look at the capstone file. Okay, here we are, uh, capstone. I've already logged in with the cart and we're gonna need a graph. So if I set the position here, uh, that I can use for the gravitational potential energy, we can use it to calculate the height change. 
uh, but for kinetic energy, we need a velocity. So let's add another axis, and we'll make that the velocity. And they're not locked together. There, they're the same. And if I now lock them, there, shear origin, scale together, there we go. So now if I do this, nothing happens. Perfect. So let's actually collect some data and, uh, and see what's going on. Uh, I want to switch uh, what we're seeing here. There we go. And I'll press record and I'll pop button. It takes off. It comes back down and I hit stop recording as soon as it does. You can hear it bouncing in the background, but that's okay. So let's now get rid of the inset piece, go back to capstone. So there you have it. You can see that the velocity change here, the acceleration is different again. And as I said, we'll have to work out how to deal with that. But now I've added the position as well. And what you're going to do is use this device. You're going to come here and you're going to make sure you're on the velocity somewhere. Take away, don't use the last two points because you don't know what's happening there. Let it make sure it's settled down and there you go. So you're going to record the position in this graph, it's red, and the velocity, 1.142 in meters per second and the position in meters and you're going to do it several times one two three four and then just before the zero mark so say five times there and five times here here two three four and five so that gives you five up and five down. And then you're going to use that in your put it in Excel. Uh, you'll use the uh, sine function to figure out how position becomes height. I'll explain that in the Google Doc. And you'll calculate the potential and uh, kinetic energies. You'll add them together and you'll see how closely they match. So here's our problem. Calculating the uncertainty of the mechanical energy starting from these measurements is quite a task. And I don't want you to do it. So what do we do? I've already said that our problem here is that we can't compensate for this. Last week when we were talking about acceleration, I said we had two options. We, we could correct for it mathematically, or we could uh, figure some mechanical correction for it. It's a systematic error. It can be corrected. The loss of energy here is a systematic energy error, but it's not so easy to correct. Not only is the loss of energy different coming up and down, even though it accumulates. Our assumption that the resistive forces are constant was too simple. The resistive forces for the cart involve the bearings of the wheels and any sensors that might be attached to them. And that's velocity dependent. So the resistive forces are actually changing as you go up and down the track. That makes the whole situation a little too dynamic for us to deal with. So what do we do? So I did a little uh, work here with Excel and um, I came up with a figure for you to use. The mechanical energy uncertainty is going to be 0.005 newtons. So that's a gift. Happy Newton day. Um, use that for the uncertainty. 
um, you don't even really have to calculate anything, I guess. Uh, I guess that's it. So everything else will be in the Google Doc. Good luck with this lab.